like I told you guys before, is to add to the team <coughs> patience, I mean patience, I'm thinking about him, love you. Add to the team practitioners that are gonna answer your phone call. So all of the guys that are here today that have a booth, and I was saying that and then I digress because I always digress, are people that if I actually text them, they're gonna text me back. Are people that if I call them, they're gonna call me back to help me do what I do. Dr. Morilla is one such guy. He's very humano, very gente, very attached to his patients, um, very available, very non-egotistical in the team we have. Our doctors that actually went into it and they love what they do and they're available to their patients. So Dr. Morilla is our infectious disease. We work with a lot of them. He just happens to be one of the ones that will always call me when I call, will always text me when I text, will always get my patient in tomorrow. I always do that. And I was rounding and I told Dr. Dr. Reyes, can you go see this room? And he's like, I'm post call. <laughs> it's just, he's here, he needs to go home, you know? So that matters. And those of you have that, that have sent me, you just missed it, I talked good about you. Dr. Reyes, you just missed it, I talked good about you. Le digo que I saw you in the hospital, I'm like, can you go see that? <laughs> We have a team of people that actually respond when we refer, and is, does everything have to be stat? Those of you in the medical area know that. You're gonna get an appointment in three to six months, and that's okay. That's not okay for my patients. If a patient misses an appointment, I know where they're at, I'm gonna track them down. And if patients have appointments with specialists, this is on my YouTube channel, you need to send them to see their surgeons after their surgery. There seems to be a culture in the valley that you decide as a skilled nursing facility or as a long-term care facility, LTAC, rehab, whatever you wanna call yourself, you decide when your patient doesn't need to see somebody. I don't know why that's happening, but that is a violation of patient's rights, okay? There's also a lot of solicitation going on in the Valley where the patient already has his surgeon, his wound care specialist, his cardiologist, or his primary care practitioner, and they happen to fall in a place where they have their medical director or their own wound care specialist or their own whatever. And the patients are being told, you don't need to go see that specialist. You don't need to see Dr. Farias or Dr. Reyes. They did your surgery, you're fine. We have our own doctors here. Okay, by the way, if you're doing that, that solicitation, expect to be reported to the state because patients' rights matter. And I want Ms. Effie to share her story when we, when we talk about it without names. <laughs> she posted about it all over Facebook. Um, this is happening every day. And guess what? Everybody, there's half of you that are very uncomfortable right now. Like, Ooh. I know this is a business, guys. But it's about time that we understand that patients have rights and that we speak up for the patient's rights. It's not okay if the patient has a follow-up with their specialist that you decide as an administrator or as a nurse, woe be to you because we, we, we are the, the world's most trusted profession as nurses and will be the nurse that hurt a patient by not allowing the continuity of care that should transpire to happen. Because, something very simple, if I've been seeing you for six years, Rosie, do you trust me to take care of your loved ones, Rosie? Yes, I do. Rosie Martin is married to Dr. William Martin. I take care of some of her loved ones. I am humbled that a lot of physicians, I'm your primary care, I'm not gonna say who you are, and their extended family. Does Rosie want her loved one to end up in the hospital and to end up in a rehab and have all new practitioners seeing her and they're calling for me to go and I'm not allowed to go? No, she doesn't because I know what her loved one had have happened to her last week. I know that she doesn't like milk. I know that her legs just started getting swollen and they hadn't been swollen before, so she needs a cardio referral. I know that she gets a un desvanecimiento en el estómago, una cosa que sean, that's chronic. We're not gonna go do all these tests because she has un desvanecimiento for 50 years. So we understand these things. So does continuity of care matter? Dr. Farias is gonna go see a foot that he just debrided and say, look at how beautiful this foot looks. Hermoso, we've come a long way. And another practitioner, whoa, you need an amputation. 
Or Dr. Re Dr. Reyes is gonna see a patient that has so many comorbidities, he already told him he needs to lose 20 pounds before he can get his surgery. And he's supposed to have a follow-up. And then somebody else is gonna say, uh, let's go do your surgery now. Does it matter? Continuity, continuity of care matters. Whoever's following your patient, it matters for them to continue. Because if not, you're causing the patient a disservice. Solicitation is against the law. I don't know why people here think that solicitation is okay. My friend Suzanne practiced nursing up north, and when she came down here, Suzanne, work night shift, when she came down here, she was appalled at the way things were done. Like, whoa, people are soliciting. I'm like, welcome to the RGD. Now, sadly, yes, McKellen is known as the fatty city, but the Valley is also known for a very corrupt place in politics and in healthcare. It, we are sh it's shameful what people know us for, but understand that we actually have good practitioners that are standing up and being ethical and fighting one patient at a time to try to do what's right for the patient. Therefore, do not be offended when the state shows up in your facility because you failed to bring in a patient fo follow up and his foot turned black. Do not be offended. How about you start doing what's right? Do not be offended when they're knocking on your door for solicitation because you're soliciting for your whoever goes to you. And then I even have some facilities that tell the patient, you can't go see that person. We're not gonna pay for that transport. If you wanna go see that person, your wife needs to take you. <gasps> this is happening in the valley. And if that's happening to you, you need to speak up. Department of Aging and Disability Services, we're gonna do a video on how to report uh, patient abuse. It's gonna be very simple and we're gonna upload it. Y va a estar en español. Si a ustedes no los están llevando a sus citas, si ustedes están en un lugar, en una rehabilitación o en una casa de, de no es de ancianos, pero es una casa donde los están ayudando a mejorar si se van a ir a su casa y no los están llevando con sus médicos, sus practicantes para sus citas, tienen que reportarlo al Estado, porque eso no es correcto y van a tener problemas con su cuidado. So, all that to say, we're going to talk about infectious disease. So, let's go to the I get off on my little tangent. So, guys, you're not gonna heal patients if you're not addressing infection. You have no idea how many patients come in with wounds of eight years. Of, so am I making this up? I have all my wound healers here. Raise up your hand if you're a wound healer. You're part of our clan, okay? Okay. I didn't want to say to speak. I think she knocked out. We have a new LVN, and she started working night shift, and she said she was gonna bathe and come over. I think she stayed in her car, because she bathed and dressed, I think she's in the car. <laughs> I just realized that. So, can you heal a wound without doing a culture? No. No, you can't heal a wound without doing a culture. I could slap a wound back on it. I could slap some skin subs that I love from Organogenesis. I could slap Lori's Hydroflora Blue. I could slap Santal on there, or Regranix from Carmi. And guess what? You can do the best wound care and you are not going to heal the wound because there's infection. Does it make sense that wounds that are older than a few weeks are infected? Yes. So what's a gold standard for cultures? You have to cut. By the way, if you have a practitioner that's taking care of your wound and you're not getting debrided, you're not gonna heal. Unless your wound is already beautiful and you're just healing. But there's a reason why we have to do some debridement. Are you supposed to bleed? Yes, that's why we're not supposed to be debriding until Dr. Quintana has told us that they're good vascular. Because if you also cut before you're supposed to and there's no vascular, it's gonna just get on necrotic. So this, there's a fine balance. So background, all of the antibiotics prescribed in the US and acute care hospitals were unnecessary or inappropriate. There's also a rampage of antibiotics being written that do not need to be written. So what we need to do is we need to drive the antibiotic to what? To what's growing? To what's growing. Doesn't make any sense if you're supposed to give the patient an antibiotic for E. coli that you're giving them something that's not gonna cover. This is why I employ the help of an ID. I'm not an ID, I'm not an MD, I am a nurse. I went back to school to do advanced practice and I know my limitations, okay? Understand your limitations even as a family practice. Understand your limitations as an MD, as a DO, as a primary care, understand your limitations. Do what's right for your patient, refer out. Okay, JCO, it's a new standard effective January 1. We go on. Okay, C. diff. We don't want everybody on all these antibiotics, no más a lo loco, like giving them whatever, because you're feeding cells like candy. 
and you're getting stronger the bacteria, and then you're gonna have super bacteria, and you're gonna have a lot of severe. Okay, so we don't wanna be giving that. Next. Okay, <clears throat> this is one of our beautiful patients he healed out. Um, that's before and after. All of these pictures are my cases, okay? Um, we're not swabbing. You have to clean everything off. Like, I, I, I still see people getting the swab and, and scraping that S card and sending that. Do you think you're gonna have some microorganisms there that are not even, okay? So you gotta cut all that off and take a, a punch biopsy, but I just cut it with a scalpel. And I send a little piece of tissue out for the culture. It's very, very simple. So practitioners, please order it that way. Uh, nurses, just stop swabbing the wounds like that. You have to scrub, 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 and get a good base tissue. Or tell the doctor, can we get a, can we get you to do a punch biopsy for the practitioner? Because we need skin tissue to go and see what's going so we can drive that. We do that on the first visit in my office. To me, everything is fast. I want everything fast. I'm calling everybody. If you've done any debridement, I need a vas, I need a bed, or I need a, an appointment for tomorrow because everybody's VIP. So we send culture on the first visit. Okay, next. Okay, <clears throat> infection versus venous stasis. Dr. Reyes talked about, so when you're obese, you have pressure in all your vessels, and so you're gonna have edema, right? Swelling makes logical sense. So when we have a venous stasis ulcer, though, they're so chronic, venous stasis ulcers are so chronic, that sometimes you see them, and a lot of people will say, oh, it's a venous stasis changes. But does it make sense to you that if the ulcer's been there more than four weeks, that there's also gonna be infection? So you have to address infection, and the edema, but don't just go straight for addressing edema without addressing the infection, right? Just with compression. So we go on. Uh, ensure proper follow-up, okay? Patients are still not finishing the antibiotic. We do it as, as clinicians. They give us an antibiotic and we don't say, we can't do that, guys. This is, this is a really big problem. Help your patient finish your antibiotic. If you don't finish the antibiotic, I always tell them this, if you don't finish your antibiotic, the next time you get this bacteria in your body, this antibiotic is not gonna work for you. That's kind of like how I say it. So they understand that. So bottom line, we understand we're creating super bacteria. They have to finish, okay? This was another case, she went all the way over here. By the way, this is a private pay patient who stopped coming in. But we were much smaller her wound from here to here. Okay, we go on. Next, let's go. Yeah, that's it. Okay, good. Okay, um, I would like for Dr. Farias to speak.